Hey guys, this is Nidhi, your host for today. I hope each one of you uh, is doing great and staying safe. Welcome to yet another session with Design Hill to help you hone your knowledge and do better in your professional life. Today we are discussing the challenge of time management, something that we juggle in our daily lives, each one of us. Today's event is brought to you by Design Hill, world's leading creative marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike, who can source high quality designs from professional designers and buy unique products created by independent artists. So moving ahead, let me introduce our speaker for today. We have with us Sylvia Dalborgo. Sylvia spent more than 20 years in the manufacturing industry and has a background in economics. After this long corporate journey, she has now recently started her own training business. She now helps professionals become more efficient in their activities and more uh, knowledgeable in wine. Sylvia, would you like to say a quick hi to the audiences? It's a great pleasure to have you here with us. Yes, so hi everybody and uh, thank you Nidhi for the introduction. I'm so glad to be here today. I see people coming in uh, from uh, Philippines, from Indonesia, um, Trinidad. So it's uh, really fantastic to be able uh, to have events like this where people can tune in from uh, uh, all over the world. Uh, as you said, um, just couple of words about myself. Um, you introduced me very well. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, um, I decided recently to uh, get into training because uh, training is something that I really like. And um, I now run online courses on time management, which is the subject uh, we will be dealing uh, uh, about today. And uh, I also run online courses about wine knowledge and uh, um, wine service. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's it. And uh, over to you, Nidhi, for your announcements. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Great. So before we start the session, uh, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, we are giving away certificates to the attendees who will stick to the end of the session. You can not miss on this chance, guys, so stay tuned till the end. Also, uh, do take a screenshot of this event, put it on your Twitter, use hashtag uh, Design Hill Events, tag Design Hill DH and uh, the time for wine, which is Sylvia's handle. Uh, the Twitter handle will, uh, will also be in the chat box in a minute by my colleague Harshita. Having said that, uh, let's quickly look at what Design Hill is all about. Need to get your parents off your back? Your Head to the, back. the world's number one the creative world's marketplace, home. Design Hill. When I started my photography business, I needed something that said, this was more than just a hobby. It's not a hobby, mom. That's why I went to Design Hill and got an amazing logo, super fast, at a price I could afford. The process was easy using Design Hill's logo maker. Just enter the name of your business, then pick out a number of designs that inspire you. I'll pick this one and that one. That one looks cute. Then pick your colors or let the system decide. Add some more info like a slogan, the industry your business is in, and your budget. The logo maker, using machine learning and artificial intelligence, will design thousands of logo variants that you can choose from and adapt. In fact, I was able to get everything from business cards to t-shirt design and complete social media kit, all with the click of a button. With that, I'm all set. Now everyone I meet knows I'm a legit photographer. Even my mom. It's real. That's decaf. Let the world know it's real and build your brand with Design Hill. All right, that was all about Design Hill. And now we are all set to start the session. Guys, if you have anything that you would like to ask Sylvia, you know the drill already. Please ask your questions under the questions tab. And we have also rolled out a few polls in the poll section. Uh, uh, don't forget to answer them as well. So Sylvia, let's, let's begin with the session. I'll quickly share the presentation that you have very graciously made for us. Just give me half a second and I will. Sure. Yeah. All right. Can everyone see the uh, presentation? Can you give, give, give us a quick yes into the comments? All right. All right, so so it's visible. Uh, over to you, Sylvia. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thanks again, Nidhi. Okay, so before we we jump into um, the subject, I just wanted to have uh, um, a brief recap of what we are going to cover 
today. So we have, uh, first of all, a look at uh, the expectations we all have when we um, start dealing with time management. Um, and we'll see why time management is so important. Uh, we'll then uh, move and have a look at uh, uh, the time stealers, uh, uh, the enemies uh, uh, that we all have to fight uh, to get uh, uh, great time management. And uh, luckily, uh, these enemies uh, also have uh, um, systems we can use uh, to fight them back. So we'll have a look uh, at that, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, move to the end uh, of our session and uh, go to the Q&A part. So uh, let's go with the expectations uh, um, we all have uh, um, when we deal with time management. Um, so um, uh, all I want to do now is ask you, um, what's your reason for being here? So what do you... Um, really want most uh, when you um, approach time management? What do you, what's the out outcome you wish you could get uh, from uh, a time management session or time management uh, instruments? Um, if you want, you can put your answer in, um, in the chat um, so I can uh, quickly go through the, um, your answers and uh, Later, you can also go to the polls uh, tab uh, near the chat tab uh, and uh, answer the poll uh, that uh, we've created for you so we can have an idea. Okay, Melissa says to be productive uh, without burning out. So work and life balance, I would say that's a good point, uh, Melissa. So let's see, Sara um, wants to know how to beat procrastination and uh, not uh, uh, fall into distraction. Yes, that is also a very good point. Uh, yeah, so I will just put a couple of points uh, to for us to, to, to remember what are um, our expectations. So more productivity, I would say. Perfectionism also, it's one of the points we will discuss about. Uh, and then uh, um, Yvonne says, to be able to inspire others with, with my time management. Okay, so you want to have a good time management uh, and then you want others uh, to improve theirs. And that's also a good, a good point. So uh, what do we expect from time management? We want to be more productive. And then uh, uh, we don't want to, to feel overwhelmed. So I guess we could say we want to feel uh, uh, less stressed. And then, um, um, yeah, also to inspire others. This is also something. Uh, I would like to put. Uh... Okay, so these are some of the expectations we all have about time management. And uh, the good news is that uh, um, we can all achieve uh, uh, all of that because time management can really help us in dealing with all uh, aspects uh, uh, we are mentioning. Uh, this is the good news. The bad news is that uh, it's not an automatic process. Uh, we all have to be very focused, uh, uh, very disciplined um, and uh, very assertive if we want to get great time management uh, because there are a lot of, uh, um, let's say, stimulus, a lot of uh, distractions. Uh, and um, as I said, it's not uh, something that... Uh, comes easy. We have really to be focused and determined to get uh, um, better at time management. Um, but why time management is, is so important? Um, time management is so important because uh, um, I think that we all know that um, time is um, a limited resource. So no matter what we do, um, no matter how we spend our day, we can sleep 24 hours, we can work hard 24 hours. No matter what we do, time 
will keep marching on and at the end of the day um, we, we will have uh, um, at the end of the day we won't have uh, the possibility to make more time okay so uh, time management is all about uh, um, what we do with the time we have so this is why it's very important it's a scar scarce resource and we have really make out the most of it so um, time management is also great because if we can really do it well it will lead us to live our days with less anxiety we will have less stress uh, we will find ourselves uh, having more free time to dedicate it to what's important to us. We will work better in the sense that uh, uh, we will do uh, more in our days and uh, the quality of our work uh, will become uh, better. So uh, we will also increase uh, um, assertiveness and self-discipline. So this is a kind of a circle. We need assertiveness and self-discipline to start having good time management and then in turn this will lead to even more assertiveness and self-discipline so you see it's a, a virtuous circle it's a, really some something uh, uh, worth pursuing um, and then <laughs> we also can get uh, better sleep which is essential to live where well our lives so these are just some examples of uh, what uh, uh, good time management uh, can do for us um, but as we said, um, there are enemies, there are uh, time stealers uh, that um, somehow um, prevent us from living our lives uh, the way we wished uh, and uh, in, the, in a full and relaxed way. We all juggle with uh, tasks, uh, work, uh, life, uh, family. So um, we all have to fight uh, some, uh, some some enemies but before we move to um, the enemies uh, I would like to uh, spend just a few minutes uh, on uh, goals because uh, we are not going to discuss goals today or uh, uh, goal setting uh, but I really want to say something about it because uh, uh, we have systems we have tools for better time management but they won't be able to do much for us unless we already have clear goals. So clarity of goals is something extremely important and this comes first. So we all have to work on our goals and have them very clear because if we don't, no matter what system we use, we will end up losing time because if the direction is not set uh, we won't be able to arrive at destination so really uh, this is an important point so if you have clear goals uh, then that's fine fantastic if you don't uh, um, i would recommend you to spend some time um, working out uh, what your goals are uh, whether um, private goals uh, um, for your personal life or uh, uh, goals uh, um, at work in your in your daily um, job uh, because it's really key to uh, moving towards uh, um, a destination so that said let's go and have a look at uh, what we call the enemies the time stealers so um, here they are. Let's go quickly through them before we go one by one uh, describing them. So, uh, number one, distractions and uh, interruptions. Um, uh, we then have procrastination, which is uh, a very um, tough enemy to defeat. We have perfection, multitasking, uh, and then uh, also the environment could sometimes uh, work against us. Uh, so we have to be aware of these enemies and uh, we have to be aware of the ways we can uh, uh, overcome them and defeat them. So let's start with the first one, um, distractions and uh, interruptions. Uh, um, and by this, uh, I, may, I am mainly referring to mobile phones, uh, and uh, uh, social media not only but 
and in this point I'm I'm referring to this uh, because uh, mobile phones and social media they are a huge uh, source of distraction and interruptions we um, take our phone in our hands uh, and we want to maybe add uh, uh, an appointment to our calendar and then we see a notification and so we, we, we go and have a look uh, whatsapp message and then we decide to reply to that uh, and then uh, something from uh, Instagram feed comes up uh, and we go and uh, decide and have a look and then we spend like half an hour scrolling down. So it's something that happened to all of us and maybe in the end uh, we forget uh, to put our appointment in the calendar. So uh, we have really to find a way to uh, tackle with distractions and interruptions because they could really steal a huge amount uh, of time uh, uh, from our days and also um, when I speak about uh, interruption I'm thinking of uh, people because interruption can come from people maybe a colleague of ours that uh, keeps uh, um, interrupting us uh, in good faith probably asking for our help uh, wanting us to review uh, something uh, um, just wanting to have a chat uh, so uh, we also have to learn how to deal uh, with people interrupting us uh, when we are in our workflow because uh, uh, this could be really um, a huge chunk of time really wasted. Okay, so um, let's go to number two, the second enemy we are going to uh, look at uh, today. So procrastination. Procrastination is um, really a tough, a tough one uh, because we keep uh, putting off uh, um, appointments, uh, tasks, and it usually has to do with uh, something we don't like, um, something that maybe is boring, so we don't really want to do it, uh, or even something that is scaring us. So because it's scary, we don't want to face it. Uh, um, so uh, maybe we keep postponing, uh, and in the end, uh, this will become crisis because uh, let's say we have to hand in a report which we really don't like uh, drafting uh, and we postpone and we postpone and postpone and at the end of this uh, putting off uh, we will find ourselves with uh, no time to draft uh, our report which of course in the end will have a poor quality so procrastination can lead, can lead to stress because we know that we are procrastinating we know that we are putting off things that we should be doing so and this gives us uh, um, an, uh, an uneasy an uneasy feeling um, and then it could lead to poor work in the end poor quality work because uh, we'll find ourselves uh, with uh, uh, rushing through tasks to complete them um, so it's uh, something that really um, a bit tricky we postpone and then uh, we rush in the end so um, uh, an enemy to to take care of uh, for sure then uh, it's, it's like for instance when we don't want to go to to the dentist so we postpone we don't want to uh, put the appointment uh, for the dentist because we fear the for instance I fear uh, I'm scared about dentists so it's something I really struggle about just just to give you an example then perfection we have uh, also uh, this um, enemy uh, and in this case we really are um, our worst enemy because perfection has to do um, more with what we expect from ourselves rather than uh, what others expect from us and when our worst enemies it's us it's really a tough battle because we will never be happy about what we've done if we keep looking at the tiny details that just don't look as we wished so we have that PowerPoint presentation and we keep looking at that text that is not aligned the way we want it to. Um, maybe we go through a report and we find a typo 
and then we decide to go all over again and review one more time because maybe there is not another typo somewhere. So also perfection could steal us a lot of time because we spent a huge amount uh, uh, of time doing uh, um, something that it's really not worth it. So watch out. Um, then we have our fourth enemy, uh, which is uh, multitasking. Um, we've been uh, we've been taught for some time that multitasking uh, is uh, something we have somehow to learn and do well, so that it's uh, a skill to master. But uh, mm, that's not really like this because, and it's not my my opinion. It's uh, it's something scientific. Our brain cannot really. Uh, deal with different tasks at the same time. So when we are um, talking over the phone and replying to email, we are not just uh, doing it uh, at the same time. We are um, talking over the phone and then our brain is switching to another mode and we are writing the emails. So what happens is that our brain keeps uh, switching from one task, talking over the phone, to another task, writing emails. And uh, the result is that uh, uh, the whole process is extremely tiring uh, because after many, many on and off, uh, our brain gets really tired. Um, and uh, also what happens is that uh, we won't be doing a, a quality, a good quality, um, job because we won't be really listening to the other person uh, and we won't be either writing a good email. So at the end of our process, probably we won't feel like uh, we've completely listened and maybe we missed something uh, of our conversation and uh, we will go and read our email draft and we'll find mistakes. Uh, we will have probably to review it and modify it. So in the end, uh, the quality is poor. And also, if we look at the amount of time in total we spend uh, on the conversation, on the email and reviewing the email and maybe asking the other people, the other person again, sorry, could you say it again? Um, could you repeat it, please? Because we were not listening. So the whole amount of time uh, turns out to be uh, more than the sum of the two tasks uh, um, carried out separately. So you see, multitasking is really not the way. It's tiring, it produces low quality work, uh, and uh, it's not. It, it doesn't really save time, which is the point. Uh, um, so it's something we really need to keep uh, to the minimum. Um, I'm not saying we don't have to because sometimes we can't uh, we can't avoid, but uh, uh, it's a good uh, good idea to really keep it to the minimum. And then we have our final enemy for today, at least, uh, which is the environment. Environment could be also um, an enemy because it's a source, uh, again, of uh, distraction and interruptions. So if you're working in a very noisy environment, uh, um, if you uh, have uh, um, something disturbing your sight uh, on your desk, uh, um, that keeps uh, your mind uh, going somewhere else. Uh, so environment could be also tricky and steal us uh, um, some time because uh, really um, it's all around us and the place we decide uh, to be, uh, it's uh, where our focus go. So we need to work on our environment and make it uh, as uh, um, clear and tidy as, as possible. So now I would like uh, you to tell me what's uh, your uh, um, weakest point among these five. Uh, if you want, you can write it in the chat uh, or uh, you can also answer um, the poll. 
uh, in the polls tab. So I'd like to hear from you if you want. Okay, procrastination, Sarah, I feel you because this is uh, really the toughest enemy for me because this is where I fall and I know it. Uh, multitasking from Philo, uh, perfection from uh, team of Design Hill, uh, procrastination and multitasking. Uh, okay, perfection, uh, procrastination, yes, distraction, interruptions. Yes, so um, we're all different. We're all different and I'm asking you that because uh, it's likely that we are not uh, uh, falling all uh, into all pitfalls uh, we've described. Uh, it's uh, more likely that we have maybe a couple. So it's important that we uh, think about uh, which are the worst enemies for us uh, and focus on them. Because if we could, say, uh, improve by 10% uh, in each of the two points uh, we are failing most, that would be a huge uh, um, amount of time gained. So I want you to think uh, at your worst uh, uh, enemy out of these five, uh, and uh, when you start later on working to defeat them, uh, focus on just uh, a couple, maybe. Okay? So let's go and see what we can do because the good news is that we can defeat them all so let's start with uh, distraction and interruptions okay so what we can do is for instance uh, start measuring uh, uh, the time we devote to um, mobile phones and social media. So start measuring time, the time you spend on your mobile phones. There are um, apps like uh, I used for uh, some time an app called uh, Quality Time, but there are many others. You can just uh, Google them and uh, they're free. Uh, and they will tell you how, how long you spend on your mobile phone and uh, how long it take? Uh, how long on each app uh, you spend your time, and uh, it's quite scary because uh, you can find that after eight hours uh, working in the office, you can spend uh, say three hours on your mobile phone, which is uh, eleven hours of your day working and on mobile phones. So, what's left outside uh, these eleven hours? It's it's really little time if uh, we want to sleep and eat. Uh, so, um, first of all, be aware of uh, how long, uh, how much time you spend on your mobile phones. And then a good idea is, for instance, to, to turn your, your notifications off uh, so you won't be distracted by the ping sound uh, every time. Um, and also, if you turn off notification, they won't cup, uh, come up on the top bar. So you won't be tempted every time to go and see um, who, 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 which email has just come in, uh, what uh, the new Instagram uh, post just published, who put you, put a like to your post, uh, and so on and so forth. And then if you want to be um, even more radical, you could, uh, for instance, just uh, um, uninstall some applications. Because, uh, for instance, you could uh, decide that you want to have uh, to allocate some time in the evening one hour to have a look at your facebook to reply to your uh, linkedin messages to uh, deal with your instagram account and uh, you won't do that on the phone you will do that from your pc on your allocated time so if it's not easy for you to access uh, Facebook, if it's not easy for you to access LinkedIn, you won't find yourself scrolling, uh, scrolling feed and uh, spending a lot of time. You allocate your time and you decide that the time it's uh, from uh, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and that's it. And you don't have the app on your phone uh, as a temptation. Uh, and of course, another good idea is to move, to move your phone outside 
of your room. So still close to you. So if one, uh, if anyone can, um, if anyone calls you, you can still hear it, uh, but you won't be able to see the screen and it's out of reach. So you can't just grab it and have a look uh, if uh, something has changed uh, on your uh, on your screen. So out of reach uh, and uh, um, far from the eyes. And then uh, um, we were also talking about uh, um, people as a source of distraction. So uh, in this case, what we can do is uh, to learn uh, to say no. Uh, no, I don't have time right now. No, I need to finish this because uh, I really need to take care of what I'm doing. Let's catch up later. So we all need to find uh, a very polite, but also very assertive way to say no to people. So, and that's, uh, um, that's an art because we don't want to be rude, but we want to be clear. No, now it's not the time. So say no, it's something we can also do to decrease the number of interruption and interruptions and distract distractions. So say no. Okay, and then we have uh, um, our second enemy, which is uh, procrastination. Procrastination is, um, for me, the toughest one. So I'm going through uh, some of the strategies uh, um, I use, and I always have to be very vigilant because I know that I tend to fall into this trap. So the first thing we can do is to put something on... Uh, uh, our diary. So I I don't want to go to the dentist because I I'm scared. Okay, I know I have to do it because I know it. So I just phone, uh, take the appointment, put it in my diary, take half of the morning uh, um, off for uh, that day, and when the day will come, I won't feel like postponing again because it's fixed. It has involved uh, other people, so it's a good strategy. Um, to have it done in a precise uh, uh, on a precise day, so this is one of the options. Uh, then uh, another option is to uh, start your day with the the most unpleasant task you have, the one you would be putting off, 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 and off again. So this is supposed to be a frog. Uh, and from which you can tell that um, drawing is not one of my talents, but uh, I wanted to try. So uh, a frog, because uh, um, the suggestion is uh, start your day eating the frog. Eat the frog first. Eat, go with the most unpleasant task you have, and then the rest of your day will feel uh, light and nice. So that's also a nice way to overcome procrastination. Then one other thing I do is I promise, I promise to someone else I, would, I will do something by a certain date. So promise to someone. Promise. Because once you've promised, then you've committed yourself and then you don't want to, to be found not keeping your word. So once you've involved some other people, then you're more likely to stick to your word. So promise it's a good way uh, to overcome procrastination. And then another way is, for instance, to um, not just uh, decide you're going to deal with the whole task that you really hate, you divide it in bits and you start with the first bit. Because usually the hardest part is to get started. So if you just uh, decide uh, to do the first bit, the easiest part, uh, um, the, a tiny part, uh, something that will not really um, feel, uh, uh, make you feel that you've, uh, that you are dealing with a whole big chunk uh, of a uh, heavy task, just the first bit. Do that and once you've done that, uh, you're more likely to go uh, to go on and complete your task because the most difficult part as i said is getting started so do the first bit okay uh one other way 
to um, overcome procrastination is to visualize. So you want to visualize uh, um, how bad it will be if you don't complete that task. So you don't really want to call that customer because you know he he's not happy uh, and he will complain. So you don't you don't want to make that phone call. Uh, but what if you don't call him? What will happen? It will happen that uh, he will become angrier and angrier and more unsatisfied. And probably he will call your boss and uh, this will make your day even more unpleasant. So try and visualize uh, the worst scenario uh, if you don't complete your task. Uh, and you could also, on the other side, visualize uh, the perfect scenario if you do complete your task, if you get it done and cle you clear it from your list. So what will happen? You will have uh, um, your day um, nicely uh, free for um, tasks that you somehow enjoy. Uh, it will be easier for you um, to get other many things done because you don't have this uh, item, uh, this task blocking your agenda anymore. So try to visualize. Visualize depends on uh, what works best for you. You could visualize uh, um, the good option, so the, in what will happen if you do it. And you could also visualize uh, um, the worst case scenario, what will happen if you don't do it. Uh, so um, the, the, the bad part. So visualizing. Okay, so this was procrastination and um, we can now go and move to uh, perfection. Sylvia? Yeah? Is it a good time to take a mid-roll because we are already like five, seven minutes ahead of the time and then we can maybe continue with the presentation. Sure, okay. Right, this is very insightful. We are not like, you know, it's not coming to my, you know, the time is pending and we're not actually realizing it. it is that good. But I'm sure everyone is enjoying this uh, as much as I am. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will be back for the questions in a while and also for the remaining presentation. Clarmax is a full service video agency based around video production. We created a brand that fit our identity at the time, but as we've evolved as a company, we found that that original brand didn't quite fit our aspirations anymore. Finding a partner to rebrand your entire company takes a lot of time and effort. Finding Design Hill was an incredible lifeline. Design Hill offers a money back guarantee. If we don't like any of the designs, we get all of our money back. The stuff that we ended up with were well beyond what we had been seeing on other creative services platforms. After creating a simple design brief by answering some questions created by Design Hill, we posted and within a few days, we had over 250 entries. Design Hill's platform made it easy to communicate with all the potential designers. Eventually, we picked a winner. In addition to a logo, our designer also created a letterhead, business cards, and banners for all of our social media platforms. With Design Hill's help, we now have a brand that meets our aspirations. We're ready for the future and everything that it's here to bring. All right, Sylvia, so I'm going to share the presentation once again. Um, okay. One second. So this was a slide we were on, right? Yeah. So, okay. This is just a, a summary of what I am uh, um, drafting on the whiteboard. So we were saying uh, um, we go over to uh, perfectionism. Uh, where the worst enemy we have, it's us. So what we can do? Um, we can, for instance, start uh, for once uh, focusing uh, on the good part, on the positive part of our work. So we need to be aware that uh, um, our perfectionism is bringing us uh, to spot only the mistakes and we have instead to work uh, and value our work. 
uh, to work in that direction and to see uh, what we've done as a, um, an outcome, uh, a valuable outcome. So we start. We need to start uh, uh, valuing uh, our work and uh, seeing the positive part of what we've done. So be positive. And then to overcome uh, um, perfectionism, we could also um, think about uh, the time, how we would spend uh, the time we could free up uh, if uh, we were not so fussy about things. Because in the end, uh, good enough uh, is better than uh, perfect. So we are not saying that we have to be careless and uh, don't complete uh, our tasks in a duly manner. We are saying that uh, we have to keep it to good enough uh, because more than good enough, it's probably too much uh, and other people probably would, wouldn't notice it. It's just us uh, keeping focusing uh, on the small tiny details uh, that really won't matter. So um, concentrate and focus on, for instance, the free time you could get uh, if you could keep it to good enough. And then one other good solution, um, it's to set a time and uh, measure the time we spend on certain tasks. So if we know that we are uh, so fussy about uh, presentation, PowerPoint, uh, um, reports, uh, uh, we set a time, we, set to ourselves, we say to ourselves, uh, let's do it in one hour and a half, and then we start measuring. And if everybody sort of can do it in one hour, one hour and a half, Okay, we could do it maybe in two hours, but it's not reason reasonable to do it in three hours because we are spending uh, um, our time, uh, uh, we are basically wasting our time. We could spend that time on something else. So um, set a time for our tasks and measure it. And then we move now to uh, multitasking. And uh, what we can do here, it's basically to force ourselves uh, to deal with one task at a time. We really have to do that. Um, and uh, what we can do is to group similar tasks together. So we do uh, what, it, what we call batching. So we do, for instance, uh, uh, all the phone calls all together, and then we move to replying emails all together. Uh, so we don't have to do um, and switch it from one to the other. So one task at a time and batching. And then uh, we also can uh, um, ask for other people's help because we could uh, also say no to some tasks. If you, we have too many, probably we could uh, say no and delegate some tasks to other people. Uh, or we could negotiate because maybe there is something we really don't like and uh, um, maybe we could get something uh, in exchange, we could exchange tasks with a colleague and do something we like more. Um, and so we won't have, and maybe we could uh, use it and batch with other stuff we are doing of the same category. So don't forget that we could uh, uh, say no, we could uh, delegate, and we could also negotiate over tasks with our colleagues, for instance. Um, and then uh, um, the last. Uh, um, point we were talking about it's the environment which could be uh, a great source uh, of uh, distractions and interruptions so first advice uh, is to have uh, a tidy workplace a tidy desk um, very essential 
so you don't have to struggle to find uh, your pen, your post-its, uh, um, very um, clean and tidy, so tidy environment. And then you have, uh, we all have really to keep it uh, distraction and uh, interruptions free. So uh, what I mean by that, I mean that we don't have to have, uh, um, for instance, well, of course, the phone over the desk is not a good idea. And we'd also, um, we also need to have uh, other um, objects uh, uh, that may lead our mind uh, somewhere else uh, off our desk. So we need to prime the environment so that so that it keeps our focus, it helps our focus. We have to help we have to help ourselves to have a, a, an easier um, focus on what we are doing so that we can really stick to one thing and immerse deeply into it. And uh, um, also here, uh, it's a good advice to have all you need close to you. So if you need some data, have it on your desk. If you need to have post-its, have it close to you. Uh, if you need a glass of water, have it close to you. So once you're there, you can completely focus and get uh, your task done. So have all you need close to you. Okay, so I think we've completed uh, some of the strategies uh, we can put in place uh, uh, when we want to defeat our enemies. So we are heading towards the conclusion of uh, our workshop uh, and I just would like to um, go over again a couple of things that I think that are really, really important. So what I want to uh, you take with you today is that uh, in the end it's um, it's not a matter of time it's never a matter of time because uh, we can't really manage time time will go on no matter what we do so what we can do is manage ourselves and decide how to invest the time we have so uh, we it, time management is a decision. It's a decision about uh, uh, spending time on important things uh, and uh, letting the not important uh, go. So it's uh, not about time, it's about us. Um, the second thing um, I would like to, to say is that um, there are better systems, that are good systems, there are tools we can use to have better time management and we should learn uh, and use them uh, but they can't do much unless we are really self-disciplined and focused and assertive so we have to commit to that if we want to succeed with time management and uh, um, the last thing uh, i want to mention is that it's uh, a personal journey a very personal journey because time management is uh, one of the most uh, um, personal subjects uh, ever so you could find uh, a system that worked for you some others uh, that won't work for you uh, and they will be different from the system i use uh, nevertheless uh, i really encourage you to um, read books about time management to get courses uh, try different things uh, explore time management because uh, it's uh, really worthwhile and uh, it's a, a very rewarding subject. Uh, so don't give up and uh, find your way. And uh, with this, I, um, I've concluded my, my speech. So I think that we have uh, uh, needed some time for uh, um, yes. Q&A. Yes, if, it's uh, amazing. I mean, these are very uh, amazing insights that we lose track of on a daily basis. Firstly, I benefited a lot. I'm going to make time during my office travels, read a book maybe and make the most of it. And let's let's pick a few questions. We have a lot of questions, but let's uh, try and pick up the most of them. 
uh, although a lot of them have already been answered during your workshop i'm gonna just randomly pick one of these questions and by the way while you do that let me thank you all the amazing people that stick with us and attended our webinar because uh, uh it's so it's so good to see people interacting and interested in time management so i'm really grateful for that so thank you everybody all right so aniket asks uh, how do you prioritize task and it's something that has been asked by some other person as well it's the question is right on your screen yeah how do i prioritize tasks so um one good thing is to um Mm, sort tasks into important and uh, urgent um, and uh, there's a, a matrix called uh, the Eisenhower matrix uh, uh, where you divide uh, uh, tasks in important uh, uh, unimportant urgent and non urgent uh, so what we want to spend uh, less time on is in important but urgent because we are in a crisis so we want we want we don't want to get there where we want to spend time is on uh, um, important tasks that are not urgent so uh, you can uh, uh, deal and plan them ahead dedicate some time to those times to those um, important tasks tasks while they're not urgent uh, they're not yet urgent so that gives you the time uh, um, to work uh, uh, without stress uh, on them so a good way to prioritize uh, to go to back to the question is to have uh, very clear in mind which is important which is not and what is urgent and what what is not and deal with uh, mainly important uh, tasks uh, important uh, jobs uh, and try to reduce uh, um, to the minimum uh, the box uh, where important uh, but urgent tasks are because we don't want to deal with something important in a, an uh, urgent way all right i hope that answers your question aniket next we have this question by ronald uh, how can i stick to a deadline as a perfectionist Okay, uh, as a perfectionist uh, is um, is um, difficult. I know it because uh, I sometimes uh, fall into this trap as well. Um, you could uh, uh, work out what good enough means for you uh, and aim to good enough, allowing some buffer time between. Uh, um, your deadline and uh, the deadline you set to yourself for good enough. So you have to aim to good enough and allow sometimes uh, some time in between, um, so that you could still have some time for some review if you really feel that you can't resist and you have to. But I think deadlines are are really really important. So we really. Um, must uh, um, stick to deadlines uh, um, and what I do uh, as I it, it could it could also be uh, a way to, to, to do uh, to deal with perfectionism you promise to someone you promise that by that date um, you will have uh, your work ready and by that date you you yet you still have to present uh, um, a good enough uh, work and then of course we have to learn to allow uh, ourselves into some mistakes because uh, we are human and uh, we if we stick to be perfect uh, mm, we would make our life uh, impossible so it's the work we have to do on ourselves i think all right all right so next uh, question uh, we are taking is from hasna uh, when is the best time to sleep and wake up to stay healthy and productive? And how many hours do you sleep? Uh, could you, um, sorry, pin it again on the screen? Well, I'm unable to. I don't know, something happened. I can repeat the question though for you. What yes. is the best time? What is the best time to sleep and wake up to stay healthy and productive? And how mm -hmm. many hours do you sleep? Okay. Um, when is the best time? It's really personal. 
because I am like an owl person, so I work best uh, in at night, in the evening time. In the morning, I am very slow, but this is very, very personal. I know uh, friends who wake up at five o'clock and they are extremely productive. Uh, they go running and then uh, they start their day at six o'clock. This is not just not possible for me uh, so you have to work out what's the best time for you and you feel because you feel um when you have more energy so i think you can uh, work that out and uh, sleep sleep is very important uh, with uh, without enough sleep we are unable to work well i sleep uh, um, around eight hours per day, seven, seven and a half hours. If I go below seven hours and a half, uh, um, it, uh, it reflects uh, on the quality uh, of my work and on my focus. Great. All right. So let's pick up the last question for the day. Uh, Charman says, uh, wants to know about punctuality. Can you touch upon this, please? I struggle with this a lot. Uh, punctuality. Um, okay. So, um, uh, and by the way, sorry, uh, I forgot to show my last page of uh, contact details because I want, to, if you could just uh, share this uh, uh, while I reply to this question. Yes, the... I will. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, punctuality. You have to um, <laughs> force yourself uh, to, um, to, to to you have to tell yourself that you have to be there ten minutes earlier. Uh, you have to leave earlier. You have uh, your in, inner mechanism will tell you that uh, leaving at uh, half past four is enough. It's not. You have to uh, leave 15 minutes earlier. So you have to trick yourself somehow uh, and uh, stick uh, stick to this trick. Uh, um, and once you see it works, uh, you will start uh, to uh, readjust uh, uh, your perception of time and uh, how long it will take you to get to a place to finish something. So it's uh, at the beginning, it's uh, you, you need to treat yourself, basically. And uh, once you once you are able to do it, uh, it you will improve, you will improve. All right. And uh, we didn't realize but we actually are done for the day. Um, you know, it was such a great session that we actually lost the track of time. I, I just I just wish it could go on and on, but it can't. Um, Sylvia, how do you feel to be here? Any last thoughts? Of, you know, how did you like the experience with Design Hill? Yeah, I really want to thank uh, Design Hill for this opportunity because uh, for me it was great to be here with you all, with people from all around the world uh, talking about uh, um, a subject that I really love and that uh, I think uh, could improve uh, uh, all our lives. So uh, really a great, uh, great opportunity. Thank you very much uh, to Design Hill for that. And I also want to uh, tell our audience that I love to hear from them. So if they wish to connect uh, um, on LinkedIn with me, I will be very, very happy. Uh, to hear from them uh, and uh, any feedbacks are really more than welcome and thank you also to you needy for handling the presentation and everything for me thank you so much it was a great pleasure to have you here and to learn from you sylvia um and i'm sure that people who want to learn more from sylvia can always get in touch with uh, her we have shared uh, her social media handles in the chat box sign in again and through cts as well uh, uh so this is not where it ends, though this brings us to the end of the wonderful workshop with Sylvia. Uh, there's a lot more that we could have learned, unfortunately, limited by time here. I hope you guys loved the session because I personally did. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much, Sylvia, for taking our time to be a part of this event. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, guys. So uh, we have a lot more events lined up for you in the coming days, guys. So if you guys are interested and haven't registered yet, uh, I'm sharing the link of our events page uh, um, in the chat box. My colleague Harshita will be doing it. You can subscribe to our events page and stay updated uh, for uh, all of our upcoming events. 
Also, do check out the Learn page to feed your inspiration and creativity. You can multiply your business and creative growth uh, 10 times by learning tips, hacks, growth stories, expert advice from the industry's best. Visit Design Hill's Learn page and don't forget to subscribe uh, designhill.com slash learn. On that note, I would like to say bye to everyone who joined us here today. Take care, guys, and stay safe. Bye. Bye, bye. everyone.